Hello and welcome to the Thursday, December 29th, 2016 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, by now it should be old news that a PHP mailer, this PHP class that allows you to send email is vulnerable. But to add a little bit to this, we actually have a second vulnerability to talk about. It's very similar, actually related to the first vulnerability that was originally discovered around Christmas. This new vulnerability is more or less just an incomplete fix of the first vulnerability. So if you updated PHP mailer a few days ago, I hope you kept good notes and can do so again with this new update. There are a couple of issues now because of the additional escaping that PHP mailer does. There were some issues where people did escape before they passed the arguments to PHP mailer, then it got double escaped and the like. So uh, I don't think uh, this problem is actually completely solved at this point. Your best bet is if you are setting a frame from address, set it to a fixed string. The from address should match the server the email comes from anyway. It's bad practice to set it to uh, an address that's provided by the user because you're not necessarily authorized to send email on that user's domain's behalf. So if you if that user has things configured like SPF records or DKIM, there's a good chance that the email will end up in a spam filter if you do set the from address, set the reply to address. Uh, that way, if you reply to the email, it uh, will go to that user, but uh, keep the from address uh, to a fixed address that is associated with your web server. And then I mentioned yesterday that uh, currently the Chaos Computer Club conference is underway in Germany. There are two talks I wanna point out uh, today, uh, one about lock picking in the Internet of Things Things. It's talking about a lot of these smart locks that are currently being offered for sale. A lot of them use Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and some of them are even controlled via cloud systems. Well, uh, one lesson here, I guess not terribly surprising, but one of the biggest flaws uh, that was found in these locks are basically just general mechanics flaws that you have in a lot of cheap locks uh, anyway. So if you take a cheap lock mechanism, you add Bluetooth to it, the lock does not become all of a sudden more secure. You can still use your good old mechanical tricks like shims and such to open uh, these locks. On the technical side, in particular the cloud part appears to be somewhat vulnerable there. Uh, if you are able to, for example, grant others access access to the lock, uh, then all these uh, web APIs and such, uh, they're subject to being intercepted. Usually TLS isn't validated correctly. So uh, these are some of the issues uh, that come up uh, there. In the end, it comes down to convenience versus security. And if you heard me talk about enough you know, things and so in the past, well, uh, it really depends. You know, if you put this lock into a door that has a big window next to it anyway, then the window may actually be the weak point, not the lock. And you may as well go with the convenience of some of uh, these uh, Bluetooth locks. The second talk hit on one of my favorite topics and that's IPv6 and how to map IPv6 internet wide. Uh, the author here presented an interesting little trick uh, with reverse uh, DNS where essentially a uh, reverse DNS server for a zone will sort of give you an indication if it obeys the RFC, whether or not there are any smaller networks within that zone that are offering reverse DNS. So this allows for a little bit of modified kind of binary search that's relatively fast, has issues like uh, not all DNS servers actually obey the RFC the way this tool expects it to. And then secondly, you also have ISPs that just do assign reverse DNS for all of the IPv6 space they're offering. So then it gets a little bit more difficult to figure out what's real, what's not. Not, but interesting approach if you are looking for better ways to scan IPv6. Well, and is it for today? Uh, based on some of the feedback I've gotten uh, with the poll a few weeks back, I started offering a YouTube channel with this podcast. If you're interested, it's still just a sound, so uh, no video associated with it. But uh, some people asked for it. And well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.